very much, Jim. And uh, you all know about call and response, right? So when Stephanie calls, I respond. That's how it works. So I'm very happy to be part of your gathering today and to have a chance to give you some of my thoughts about the work that we do together and to affirm the work that you're doing. It is so important. And I think it's important for me and any community leader to acknowledge that those who serve our kids, especially those who serve our kids who are most difficult to serve, are doing incredibly important work for each and every one of them and for the community at large. So thank you and give yourselves a round of applause for what you do every day. Uh, at one level you might say, well what's the mayor doing here? Right? Education is not my department. Ever hear that phrase in government? Not my department. And you know, we have kind of a multiplicity of local governments here, you know, in, in Oregon. The way we're set up, right? We've got Metro and TriMed and cities and counties and ESDs and school districts and community college districts and you know sometimes I tell people that on the on the square foot where you're standing there are nine local governments, uh, which is you know, complex to say the least. So it's easy maybe to default to that phrase. It's not my department. You know, stay in your lane. The city does police and fire and parks and transportation and water and sewer. And the county does public health and libraries. And, the school districts and ESDs do education, but once you get into the work, you know that there has to be collaboration. And one of the teachable moments for me on that front was when Dr. Robert Anda came to town a few months ago and spoke to a conference here about ACEs, about adverse childhood experiences. Many of you know Dr. Anda's work. Uh, and it was revelatory to me and a full table full of the Portland Police Bureau leadership who were there to hear his lecture, and, and I think that is commendable that they were there. Um, and again, you know, you know the pattern that he, he and his colleagues laid out, that adverse childhood experiences lead to social and emotional and cognitive impairment. Those lead to adoption of some high-risk behaviors. Those lead to disease and disability and social problems, and those lead to early death. And so adverse childhood experiences, and the more of them a child accumulates, have literally toxic effects on people's lives. And that's something that all of us in public service, regardless of what department we're in, need to be aware of and think about. Um, and staying in our lane really isn't an option. Now, one of those toxic effects, or many of those toxic effects, show up in the criminal justice system, which is very much the business of the city of Portland. I am the police commissioner, uh, as Jim said, in addition to my other responsibilities as mayor. And as police commissioner, I get these little buzzing sounds in my pocket uh, or on my nightstand uh, all the time because I get direct reports from the police bureau about what's happening in the city. And some of it you might see on the news or read about in the newspaper, but a lot, unfortunately, you don't see, and a lot we get desensitized to. Uh, just some of these reports. Uh, a car last weekend, a family in that car, a mom, a dad, three kids in the back seat. Dad was shot in the arm, another bullet entered the car, bounced around, lodged in the mother's hair. Three kids in the back seat, bullets into the side of the car, but fortunately the bullets were stopped by the car, uh, and the kids are okay. Uh, February 2013, a bullet goes whizzing through the bedroom window of a Roosevelt High School junior, flies across her bed right where she would have been sitting except she'd gone to take a shower. Uh, December 2014, this one was in the news, four students shot outside of Rosemary Anderson High School. Um, March 2015, an incident that I actually came upon just as it was unfolding because I was out on a ride along with one of our police officers in East Precinct where there was a birthday party at the East Portland Community Center. It let out. All the kids were streaming up 106 towards Stark, where they would get towards buses or Max uh, and go home. And there had been an argument between two young men, and one of those young men pulled a gun out of his waistband and turned around and fired like that back into the crowd towards his intended victim. Fortunately, in that case, and with actually quite a few of the incidents this year, no one was hit. And that's a blessing, but it's dumb luck. It's not something that we can count on. 
And for every one of the kids in that crowd, that was an adverse childhood experience. That was trauma. And you and other education professionals and me as somebody in the criminal justice system and all of us as citizens and parents and neighbors, we will have to deal with that trauma. So it's very important that we get upstream in the lives of these kids and try to interrupt that trauma wherever we can. And that's why the understanding of ACEs matters so much. Again, I see this from an unfortunate vantage point because I get those reports. And I know that we are going to break the record this year, unfortunately, for the number of gang-related incidents. We've already had 115 so far this year. And that's tragic and terrible. And we will do everything we can with thoughtful, careful, de-escalating police services to try to intervene in the lives of those kids at that moment. But so much better if we get to them many moments, many months, many years before. One of the blessings of this job is I get to see uh, how good a job, by the way, the Portland Police Bureau is doing. And I know a lot of you work with our school resource officers and others. Um, they are de-escalating incidents so often. In fact, the father of the young man who turned into that crowd and fired came to our community police collaborative meeting three weeks later, where all of us who work and try to, are trying to stop gang violence work together every two weeks. He came to that meeting and thanked the police officers for their restraint because there were two police officers 10 feet away from that kid walking out the front door of East Precinct. He chose poorly for where to fire that weapon. <laughs> But he chose well because the, neither of those police officers fired because they worried about the kids in the background. And one of them at risk to himself chased that young man around the corner and up into the parking lot. And the kid threw the gun into a bush and he was arrested without incident and without harm to him. And the father came and said to those police officers, thank you because your good work saved my son's life. And now he has a chance, albeit in the criminal justice system, to start over and do it right. So. I can get going on the subject of policing and community policing and dealing with kids sensitively as police officers for quite a while. But I'm really much more interested in how, again, with your help, we can get upstream in the lives of our kids. One of the things that we've done at the city this year that I'm so proud of, and I know you've, some of you have seen the results of this, is for years our parks system was under budget pressure, understandable budget pressure, to recover more and more of their costs with fees. So our community centers typically charge a drop-in fee. If a kid wants to come and use the, the gym or swim in the pool or play basketball. And, uh, and our parks managers were having to you know, maintain this policy, even though they knew they were keeping kids out who should have been in, who should have been busy instead of on the street. And so, because the city's fortunes improved this year, we took some of that money, and not one-time money, but ongoing money that goes on every year henceforth, and put $2 million of it into making our community centers free and available for teenagers. So, uh, it's worth it. It's worth it. It looks good, because if, if you went by Dishon and Community Center, where we started this effort this summer, you would have seen 2,500 kids who got the free pass coming in and out of that building. The park staff are all kind of shell-shocked and wide-eyed and tired because they had so many kids to serve, but they are so happy because they have that mission for serving kids just like you do. And none of them complained about us doubling their workload. Um, and filling that place with kids. And now we're going to go on to expanding that free access for recreation to Saturday nights in four of our community centers across the city. And we're going to convert the dish, I'm sorry, the Montebello community, yeah, that's going to be fun. Uh, we're going to convert the Montebello community center to a teen center. And again, it'll be free and available for teenagers, and we'll get them there with free bus passes and other ability to get them around the city. So we need to do this. It's really good to be able to say that as a former Parks Commissioner and as somebody, again, who on, on the rest of the City Council this view is shared. We want to do these things, and now that we have the resources, we're going to. And we know the difference that it makes. And if you, if you see those community centers full of life and activity, you'll, you'll agree, I'm sure. I think you already do. 
There's some other things that we're doing at the city that I think will help. Um, public policy. We are working to ban the box to make sure that people coming back out of the criminal justice system don't automatically get excluded from consideration for employment because they have to check that box. Have you ever been convicted of a crime? That's a public policy change that we have. And, and we will squeeze, we've already done that for our own applications, but we will make that public policy uh, in our city. Um, we are working in partnership with Multnomah County and uh, a lot of nonprofits on the whole issue of child sexual exploitation. Uh, we have, and you know some of the victims of this trauma, uh, we have a crisis in our community of being a place where that terrible festering menace occurs and victimizes our kids. But you're seeing, I think, public agencies working well together as partners to address the upstream issues. And that's the word that I keep looking for ways to make real. How do we get upstream in the lives of these kids before they ever flirt with becoming a gang member, before they ever get that gun, before they ever try that drug, uh, before they drop out of school? How do we get upstream in the lives of those kids? Um, we are dealing humanely with the crisis of homelessness in our city, and we are nowhere near where we need to be. And both the, the terrible situation of those people who are living on the streets and the terrible side effects that everyone else experiences are unacceptable to me. But we're trying to deal humanely with the people as a solution to the problem, rather than dealing with them as a public safety menace. They are victims and we need to treat them as victims. They are victims of trauma. We need to address their trauma. And, and I will need your help, frankly, as mayor. I will need your help reminding good-hearted poor wonders that that's who we are. Because there's so much frustration with this pandemic of homelessness on our street that it's understandable why some of our fellow citizens would simply say, get them out of here. I don't care where they go and we have to care where they go. So I'm here as your partner. I want to learn more from you and what you're doing because education is not my department, but oh yes it is. My city will not succeed unless you and the kids that you serve succeed, unless the kids that have walked out the door of some school come back, unless the kids who've gone on into the criminal justice system because of bad decisions that they made, are given the opportunity to change those decisions and finish their education and get that first job and not have to be dissuaded by the box that says, have you ever been? If all of us work together and get upstream in the lives of our kids, our kids, this is the city that it should be. So I love the work you do. I honor you for doing it. I'm proud to be your partner. I have a lot to learn from you. I hope this year, in addition to teaching the kids, you'll spend a little time teaching me too. Thanks for having me here today.